and I've watched tons of TED Talks. So when our next speaker, when I read that she's a TED Talk speaker, you need to lift it up. But Tina, and I love Tina, because I'm going to tell this story really quick. Christine was my mom's name, and what did we call her? Tina. So my mom passed away 20 years ago, so I've always told Tina, when I meet at Christine, it's, it's my favorite name. So Tina and her husband, Kevin, have a beautiful son, Michael. And let me tell you about Tina. She runs a large real estate team, large real estate team. And just like Brent said, it didn't stop her from saying, you know what? I'm going to stop selling a little more homes, and I'm going to do this rev share thing. So a great TED Talk speaker from Raleigh, North Carolina. Let's give it up for Tina Cole. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, so yes, I brought notes because I'm a nerd and my glasses in case I can't see, so this is 40. Clayton, great job. Clayton was actually one of the guys that the last person I spoke to before I made the decision to come over, he had no, no skin in the game and, and really his energy made me say yes. So, um, so Brent, thank you for having me today. My name is Tina Call. I live in Raleigh, North Carolina. I have been selling real estate for 22 years. Um, I started my career in Michigan. So for the first seven years, I was a realtor, and I became the five people that I surrounded myself with. And those were the people in my office, and they were great, great, great people. And I sold about 30 homes a year. Um, in 2006, the market crashed. And I went from making $150,000 a year, which I thought I was rich because that was the most that anyone in my family had ever made. Um, and the market crashed. And I went down to $40,000 a year. And I knew that I had to change something. And so I prayed and prayed about it. And thank God, I ran into one of the top, top agents in our market who was making about a million dollars a year. Now our market is crashing, and this woman is killing it. And so we sat down for 20 minutes, and I just said, Belene, help me. You know, I really love this business, and I want to stay in it. What is your advice that you'd give a young individual in this business? And she said, Tina, or she actually said, um, hey, kid, if you want to make it in this business, you need to surround yourself with big thinking people. You need to read books about self-improvement every day, and you need to hire yourself a coach. And I didn't know what a coach was in real estate at the time, but I followed her advice and I literally signed up for the same coaching company that this woman was with. And guys, if I tell you it changed my life, it's, it's an understatement. Th that coach taught me how to take my real estate business from a let it happen to you every day to a system, to scripts, to dialogue, to presentation skills. It gave me a voice. So all of us have a script, and it, you know some work better than others. But the reality is it gave me a voice. So armed with my new uh, mission and, and taking my income from 40000 right back to 150 that first year, my husband Kevin and I decide, you know what? We got to think bigger. We don't like Michigan. It's cold. So. Why do we live where the wind hurts our face? We can move. We are not a tree. And so we decide that we're going to move down to North Carolina. Scariest thing we ever did, but here we land in this new town 10 years ago. Don't know one person, but we're armed with scripts, we're armed with a phone, and we're armed with determination. And we burned the boats. There was no going back. And thank God for that man, because I freaked out. And I couldn't get on the phones. It was weird to me. People had accents down there. And I was just out of my mind, um, out of my comfort zone. But Kevin really pulled us through it. So I went on all the appointments. He made the cold calls. And we were able to sell 38 homes our first year in a new market. We went to, thank you. Um, I know there's people that do way more today, but that was 12 years ago. Um, second, second year, we sold uh, 55 homes. The third year, 88 homes. The fourth year, I wanted to make a million dollars selling real estate, and I finally did it and made a $1.3 million, 130 homes by myself. But guys, I had achieved my goal, but I was so desperately hating that life. Because when you make a lot of money, you exchange a lot of time for money. So I would go on vacations like these, and I would be sitting in a room watching my kid at the pool, and I'm on the phone talking to sellers about somebody placing the sign in the wrong yard or somebody leaving a door open. And it was miserable for me. I love people, and I love real estate, but there had to be a better way. So I spent eight years at REMAX, 
And as I started to look at my career at Remax, I realized that I was paying 80, 90, 100 thousand dollars a year, getting punished for my production. And so I thought, well, gosh, if I want leverage, maybe I should go to that little Kool-Aid drinking company called Keller Williams, and they're going to teach me how to build this seventh level team. And so I left Remax. I went to Keller Williams for the promise of freedom. And what I found is that when you put yourself in a position where now you're attracting people and recruiting people to a team, all of a sudden people start calling you a leader, which is really weird because you're not set out to do that, right? So I would look back and go, oh my God, all these people are following me, why, right? And you're, you're intimidated, you have imposter syndrome, but you push yourself through, right? We have heavy accountability when we have people depending on us. So at Keller Williams for several years, I had amazing agents that I brought into the business that are here with me today. And I found that I was still on a roller coaster. How do I get off this roller coaster of having to recruit talent, giving them opportunity, but knowing that that talent one day is gonna walk out the door and say, Tina, I love you, thank you for doing what you did, but now I'm gonna go build what you just built, and I gotta go. And so I just was looking for a better way to earn a living without having to do the roller coaster. So I have a really good friend and she's here today, Sharon, and she actually inspired me to start investing in real estate. I watched Sharon have 30 rental properties all paid for and Sharon makes 30 grand a month in residual passive income. So I was on a plan to do that and I did. I bought six properties. They made about $30,000 a year. So that really wasn't a plan to get out. And so then I decided I was gonna invest bigger and I was gonna buy trailer parks. They're not sexy, but they're profitable. So we looked into doing that and the reality is that those trailer parks were gonna be headaches. And finally, I got a call from Michelle. Michelle Sayward, my sponsor right there, she's waving. And Michelle called me and said, Tina, I know what you're going through. I know you wanna create passive income. I think I've found a way. And I said, what's your way? She said, I'm going to a little company called EXP. And I said, no thank you. I don't like the logo, I'm luxury, I was such a brat. I'm sorry, Glenn, wherever you are. Um, you know, I, I just didn't connect with it. It wasn't huge in my market yet and I just couldn't connect with it. But she hounded me for two months and thank God for that woman because I wouldn't be here today if she didn't hound me. Um, there was a point where she called us so much that Kevin said, is that Michelle? Tell her we're not going to EXP, damn it. Um, so finally, she caught me at a weak moment. At 10 o'clock at night, I start watching a video. It was not Brent Gove's video, it was actually Rob Flick's video. And it really brought me to tears and I started to take my ego out of this. Forget the logo, forget everything. Look at your 20 year history. What did you build? You walked out of Remax with a box and a Lifetime Achievement Award. Didn't really build much there. At Keller, it was a great company, but I really didn't build much there. And so when I started to look at the the, the whys, I started to have these aha moments. So this is where I'm gonna read off my paper so I don't forget. So this is what it was for me. It made financial sense, right? I didn't have to give all my money to my brokerage. I had several wealth building opportunities, right? I had rev share, I had stock, I had my sales, which were very important. I could help my agents grow teams. Jennifer Cervera is such an inspiration. She's on my team. She came to us two year, one year in the business She's recruited eight agents in 24 months. And that young woman now has 68 agents, sorry, 68 agents on her team and she's on my team. That's life changing. So her rev share check last month was the equivalent of her investing in a $2 million property at a 5% return. Where, tell me where could she do that? Nowhere, right? That is amazing. So Jen, you're awesome. Collaboration, guys, my business went from 62 million to 72 million from Remax to, to um, Keller Williams. At EXP, it went to 105 million, 125, 35 million, and this year we're tracking for 200 million, and that is because of the combined knowledge in this room. Glenn did something really special, right? He created incentivized leadership, and that's what this is. It's not recruiting. Call it incentivized leadership because that's what it is. I am incentivized now to go help my team and my bigger team, those 658 humans, do what I did, do whatever they wanna do. Maybe they don't wanna make a million dollars, but I'll, I'll meet them where they're at. Um, successful agents, you know, helping people, successful agents coming together and helping others at the bottom, that is massive, that is massive. 
Um, there's an exit strategy here, right? I mean, this is an exit strategy for all of us. I love the fact that you can build a virtual team without overhead and expense. You guys are gonna meet Dan Hillsman. He's one of my favorite people. I had him talk to our team. And the fact that Dan wasn't a big mega producer and he's tracking just under me in my numbers is amazing. But Dan is working his ass off at calling agents. I don't have to do that. I worked my ass off at calling for sell by owners and expireds. So yes, I do have a few more people that reach out to me and say, hey, Tina, I want to partner with you. But it's possible. And that's the thing. If you're sitting there thinking, well, I'm not Tina Call and I'm not Brent Gove, that's BS. It's BS because they're, it's so possible. Um, and then scalability. Wherever could I scale to 18 states in 24 months and we just got our first partner in France. That is amazing, amazing. <laughs> So here are the results. In 24 months, we went from 14 agents to 93 frontline agents. That is how many I've recruited. Um, we're at 658 in our group, which is amazing. Um, and we're in 18 states. So today, 24 months later, I can sit here and say that EXP made me free. The amount of rev share that we're earning on this group is the equivalent of having $12 million asset at a 5% return. And guys, no trailer park, no rentals, nothing could have done that for us in 24 months. There is just nothing out there like it. So thank you, Glenn. I think it's amazing. All right, so here are the tips that I would say to use to help you guys attract versus recruit. Let's see if I can do this right. Oh, not working, here we go, there we go, all right. So I think that you know we all have to sit down and, and think about what is our story. So when I'm talking to an agent, I wanna know their story. What's their pain point? Why are they where they're at? What do they want? Do they wanna sell more homes? Do they want more time with their family? Um, you guys will meet her, but Casey Jiha had an amazing Tahoe Mastermind uh, recording. If you guys haven't seen that, watch it. But I watched that and I felt so inspired. I called her and I said, teach me your ways, woman. And so she said, what's your story? And so we started to talk about it. And so now I talk about my story because I know there's others like me. I attract people that are like me, that maybe built bigger teams and they want to get out of the day-to-day -day production. So I can finally say that I'm out of day-to-day -day production and I'm focused on those humans that I'm surrounded with every day. So have a story and learn everything there is to know about the people at EXP. I know about Clayton Gitz and I know about all of the people that are at this company and I know their stories because I can use those stories when I'm talking to somebody to inspire them. People don't come to EXP just for RevShare. They come because they're inspired to be here. So that is huge. Um, I teach three-way calls, so I have my team bring people to me so we can show them the collaboration, right? I'm taking time out of my day to sit down with this human, find out their issues, and then help them through it. So when I have new agents on my team, I don't expect them to know everything, so I really teach duplication in the team for now. I can't do it all by myself forever, but our leaders start to rise. Sharon Evans doesn't need me to help her recruit anymore. She knows a lot about EXP and Kelly DeBras. They don't, we don't need each other as much anymore, but in the beginning we did. So get your ego out of it if you're a, brand, if you're a seasoned agent and you just moved to EXP. Use your senior partners. Stop calling them upline. They're not your upline. All right. Um, where are we, number three. So again, learning everything there is to know about eXp, knowing what you're selling, knowing the product. You have to study this. If you're gonna get serious about eXp, you have to know what the ICON program is. You have to know everything that your company offers because people are gonna ask you and you don't wanna act like you don't know. Um, number four, this is, this is a really good one. This is um, a lender script that I use. So how many people in the crowd have lenders calling them all the time saying, I want your business, I want another deal, please help me? Everybody, right? So I decided that instead of turning these lenders away, I'm gonna try to partner with them. So I asked my lenders, hey, how many agents do you have working with you today? And I would say the average ans answer is between four and eight agents. And so what I tell my lenders is, what if I could help them triple their production, double or triple their production, would that be helpful to you? And they're like, yes, how are you gonna do it? Well, what if I met with them and sat down and had a business strategy session about their business? 
do you think that they could do more production? Yeah, well introduce me to them. I literally have lenders calling me every single week saying, hey Tina, talk to, to Joe over here because I told him about you and I told him that you guys have mastermind groups and you guys have coaching and you guys have training. Do you wanna meet with them? Absolutely I wanna meet with that guy. So we have all of our lenders literally lifting us up and promoting us, which is amazing. So if you're not including your lenders in this, I think it's, it's wrong. Really, they're gonna make more, you're gonna make more, and lenders need to partner with us. Um, and finally, um, people ask me all the time, well, what do you say when you call an agent? You know, I don't know what to say, I feel stupid. And the biggest thing for me about calling somebody is talking about partnering with them. So if I were gonna call Brent Gove today, I would call and say, hey Brent, how are you? It's Tina Call, you know, how's your business going? Hey, do you got a quick minute for me? Sure, I do. You know, we were on a mastermind call yesterday and we were talking about the thing, you know, this, this amazing opportunity we're building here in the triangle market or our market and your name came up and I decided I wanted to give you a call because I wanted to see if what we're doing resonates with you and if you wanna be a part of it. Can we meet for 15, 20 minutes so I can show you this? And if it resonates, we'll dive deeper. Most people say yes to that meeting. You're not calling and pitching EXP. They might say, oh, is this about EXP? No, not really. It's not about EXP. Guys, EXP is a vehicle. I feel like I'm driving a Ferrari versus a 10-speed bike now, right? We have so many opportunities at this company, so it's not about me recruiting an agent and making $2,800. $2,800 is not gonna get me out of bed, but it's about changing somebody's life. And what if Michelle Sayward didn't call me that day, right? What, what if she gave up on me because I said no 15 times? I wouldn't be here today. So she didn't give up on me, so don't give up on others. I mean, this company is a platform that we know, we know has never been done before. In the history of our nation, we've never had a company like this bringing over thousands of agents every single month. And so I just believe that this is the future, and I'm so excited to be here, and I respect everybody, and I, I just thank you for the opportunity, so. Thank you.